Okay, so I'm gonna have you say it. It's it's for for uh, far ha na far ha na. You are one of the keynote speakers this year at BurleyCon. Yes, I was. And it's also my first BurleyCon. Oh, great time. Oh my god, that's so much fun. Yeah, I'm having sparkle overlo overload. Ah. I've been a belly dancer for almost 25 years, and I started doing that before, you know, a few years before I started doing burlesque. But I was also the first belly dancer to come out of the closet about doing burlesque, even though I'm pretty sure that I wasn't the only person at the time, and mm -hmm. now I'm definitely not. Yeah, no. there, there's tons, but they took a lot of heat for that in the belly dance community because they didn't understand that there was a connection historically between belly dance and burlesque. And in the belly dance community, everybody's pet peeve, everybody's, even mine, was we didn't want to be compared to strippers because it wasn't stripping, it was mm -hmm. a cultural, dance, you know, it was an art form indigenous to countries from all over the Middle East and North Africa. Um, but unlike most belly dancers, I didn't have a problem with stripping. I just didn't like it. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, it's not that I didn't like it, but I would always try to educate people when they thought that belly dancing was stripping. I didn't get offended. Some of the classes that I taught here at Burley Khan was that it's called the Nani Side of Little Egypt, and it was like sort of a, a historical through line of how belly dance and burlesque have intertwined from the 1890 World's Fair with Little Egypt on up to now. Mm -hmm. And um, then the other classes I teach here have been um, belly dance moves for burlesque artists so they can see, like, you know, there's certain belly dancing movements you can take and use them in burlesque in a lot of ways. Like there's uh, so many different shimmies a lot of burlesque dancers, they just, when they shimmy, they tighten everything up. But there's mm -hmm. like an Egyptian shimmy that's so loose that the first time I did it in the Velvet Hammer, the audience was applauding, but then like everybody in the entire dressing room I came over to me, what did you do? How did you do this? How did you? And I was like, ah, oh, it's just an Egyptian shimmy. And they were like, what? <laughs> Show us. My understanding is the art form that is developed more for females than, is that correct? That yes, it's, it's a, it's a, well, it, it started out there at long, most people don't know where it came from. And mm -hmm. when I say most people, I mean all people because it's it's considered to be like the oldest dance on the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, a, it came from all over the Middle East, North Africa, and Central Asia. And a lot of scholars, including belly dancers that are really respected, that have done field research, um, think that it comes from birthing rituals, like that's where all the like, abdominal undulations oh. come from. But it's typically practiced by women, for women, right. in social gatherings. So it's got its, it's got its like indigenous roots and then it's got like the show or cabaret or theatrical aspect mm -hmm. of it too. Um, and, but the, the stuff that we think about, or we, I mean as Westerners, of, uh, you know, guys like going all googly-eyed, and that, that kind of pretty much just comes from like James Bond. In, in the Middle East and in like ethnic communities here or in Europe or something, it's looked upon as something that you would have at every wedding that kids could see, mm -hmm. that, you know, people in the audience would get up and join. It's just like refined and staged versions of like Arabic social dancing. Because you were originally a belly dancer, right? Yes. And then you transitioned into being a burlesque dancer. Mm -hmm. did, did the belly dancing community, did you get a lot of flack when you started? I kept it a secret for 10 years. Wow. Because I was working in Arab clubs all yeah. over Los Angeles and, and you know, private parties for Persians and Arabs and Armenians. And I mean, obviously, and I didn't use the name Princess Farhana. When I was in the Velvet Hammer, it was always Princess something, you know, that like, you know, just so they could do it. But I just, I, I didn't want any of my bosses at these places to know or any of the people whose houses I worked at for parties that hired me because I was like a good mm -hmm. and elegant belly dancer. I finally came out of the closet in 2005, which was, you know, that, that was like pretty much 10 years in the closet. And it, the reason I did was because I'd already been making belly dancing instructional DVDs, and now I say DVDs, but they were VHS app tapes at that point. <laughs> um, but I'd been making them, and I was known for them. And so I, a lot of people asked me to do a burlesque one, like people that I knew, and then I thought it would be a good thing. And that was, you know, that was what that was like almost ten years 
years ago now too. Mm -hmm. So burlesque was not at the point that it was, but it, you know, it was so fun and so blurry. I did put out the first ever like instructional burlesque DVD, and it's got stuff about costuming, stuff about movement, stuff about music. A twirling technique, which Indigo Blue did, we had her mm -hmm. do it for two reasons. One, because she's like the very best. And second, I thought this will be a good thing because she's younger than I am. She has a lot more collagen to so right when uh, about when that was going to come out, I um I wrote this very long and very completely researched and very well thought out article about belly dance and burlesque together in America and why I thought it was great and what I thought the similarities were in all of this, you know, because there's a lot of similarities. Both types of dances um, not only look good on, but they celebrate women of every different size, shape, age, and color. You know, the diversity is really appreciated. And of course, in both types of dance, the, the, the uniforms or the costumes are just fantastically extravagant, glitter. Right. I mean, there's so much similarity there, and the movement vocabulary is insanely similar. Like that, you could you could take, you know, I could do a full belly dancing show, but if I stood maybe with my legs just a little bit wider, and, and you know, instead of like putting my hand up like this every once in a while, just like, you know, maybe like adding some straight Western arm, you would not be able to tell whether it was belly dancing and burlesque. Her last costumes, um, to begin with, very early, you know, like in the 30s and the 40s, was sort of an appropriation of what they thought harem girls would look like. Mm -hmm. And then that was stolen from America by, like, um, Egyptian cinema in the golden age because up until then belly dancers had only worn one piece dresses. They never wore a two piece costume yeah, yeah, yeah. like they did. They stole that from American burlesque <laughs> dancers. So there's so much like crossover. Yeah, there's so much crossover. And so I wrote this big article about it and I hit send on my computer. And then I kind of just, I was like kind of a little bit stressed and I was like, oh my God, did I just, I, this cold wave of fear swept over me. And I was like, did I just commit career suicide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, I didn't really hear anything about it until like a few days later and someone's like, have you seen, you know, blah, 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 buzz. It's like, you know, it's like the biggest, uh, the biggest belly dancing forum, like worldwide, mm -hmm. huge, huge. Yeah. Because I, I didn't publish the article on that, I posted it on another one called Gilded Serpent, which was more article oriented. Mm -hmm. But apparently buzz had 31 pages about the- Comments, 31? <laughs> you know, yeah, not even comments, wow. just like paragraphs. And um, some of the ones that come to mind that I mentioned in the keynote speech were calling me a slut, a dirty pole dancer, which there was no such, you know, pole dancing wasn't as much of a thing. Yeah. And then um, one of them said that I not only set belly dancers, but women in general back a hundred years, you know? And I mean, it was, that was horrible. Dance festival started asking me to do burlesque. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say like, are you sure? You know, and I'd send a picture in a burlesque costume. Yes, we want you to do burlesque. And I'd be like, are you sure? And I'd send a costume that was a little more naked. Yes, we really want you. Are you sure? And then it would be like, you know, like some... Just and, naked and, picture. Completely. Yeah. You know, like high heels and a boa. Yeah. Pretty much. Not even a G-string or anything. And they'd be like, yes, we want you to. And then one festival in Arkansas, which is a total Bible belt, said they want you to teach burlesque. And so I said, are you sure? And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do it. And then she called me back two days later and she was like, I have to talk to you about the burlesque workshop. And, and I was like, I mean, I wasn't even horrified. I was like, oh yeah, she's gonna cancel it. And, and then, you know, then she's like, um, I'm not sure if you, you'd be interested in this or I don't, I don't know what you're gonna think of this. And I was just sitting there going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know mm -hmm. you're gonna, I mean, I didn't say it to her, but I said, right. come on, just cancel it. I'll give you another class. She goes, you know, we have um, almost 50 people registered your class in the studio only holds 30. Do you think we can add a second class? <laughs> I was like, sure. But finally, it all calmed down, you know, and then yeah. people started, oh, and one of the things that really made me really kind of excited, which I can say now on a personal note, like, right after all the, um, the hubbub was going on about burlesque, me, I mean, me doing burlesque and, mm -hmm. you know, how horrifying I was and stuff was, I got asked to teach in, in Egypt at a giant dance festival, like the biggest festival in, um, you know, pretty much in the world, yeah. centered in Cairo. 
you know, it's just sitting there going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a dirty cold answer. <laughs> and it's been really calm, 2014. Uh, remember to subscribe so we can send you more glittery, burly, sparkly channels. And I love you. Burly Khan. Yay! And I love you. Yes. Ooh.